Here we are. Another day, another tier list. Blizzard games, mostly series, right? Franchises. There's shit behind me. I'm gonna move my I'm gonna move myself over here for this. We're gonna start from like what order these games released in. So the first one on here, Warcraft Orcs and Humans was the first RTS game I ever played. I didn't really know what an RTS was before this. I mean, they had like, I think Age of Empires might have been out at this point, but I didn't play it. Warcraft Orcs and Humans was the easy B tier. It's a B tier game. The first one was a B tier game. I'd say A, but we've got to have room for other games to, to go places, right? Warcraft Orcs and Humans was a classic. This game was awesome. It introduced, you could even like dial up. I remember dialing up on a modem to my friend's house and we could play each other, fight each other. It was awesome. Now the next game to come out out of all these was Warcraft 2, Tides of Darkness. And it had an expansion too, which beyond the Dark Portal, which we'll just count in this because they're virtually the same game. Now Warcraft 2 was an easy, easy A tier. Warcraft 2 took everything awesome about Warcraft 1 and made it that much better. And this is the first time where we actually saw the classic Warcraft cartoon style graphics was in Warcraft 2. That's where kind of that whole idea, like foundational idea of what the Warcraft universe was, was set up, was in Warcraft 2. So Warcraft 2, amazing game. I had so much fun and the shit ran on a 486. The same system requirements as pretty much um, Warcraft 1. So it was, it was awesome. Music was great too. Music was fantastic. The style, everything, everything about Warcraft. I can't say anything negative about Warcraft 2. It was awesome. Okay, Diablo 1. I mean, completely shattered the industry. It was so dark, so gothic. It was darker than any game anybody had really seen on, on PC before. ARPGs were a brand new thing. This game did shit that very few other games have been able to accomplish since. It set up an entire genre for fuck's sake. Obviously, with Warcraft 1 and 2, there were other RTS games that were good around. But there was no other ARPG. Diablo 1 is an easy fucking S tier. I replayed this game right before Diablo 4 came out. It's still good. It's still the atmosphere. It's still fun. It's still a fun game. Yeah, its mechanics didn't age very well. Um, it's kind of clunky, but it's still a good game. Okay, next up. The original StarCraft. Now, everything that... Warcraft 1 and Warcraft 2 accomplished in terms of RTS. StarCraft 1 took that shit and amped it way the hell up. Way more complex in terms of RTS games than than Warcraft 1 or 2 by far. Like the strategies you could impose in StarCraft were awesome. Not only that, but the story that came with StarCraft 1 was like, and this also counts Brood War by the way. This is StarCraft 1 original and Brood War. This game had an amazing story too, way better than Warcraft 1. Warcraft 1 and 2 story was kind of all over the place and didn't really matter. Starcraft's story was so fun to follow, amazing characters. I mean, you had like RPG level characters in a fucking RTS game. The, the maps were amazing, the music was great. This is easy S tier. Starcraft 1 and Starcraft 1 Brood War, easy, easy S tier. Like right here, it's like Blizzard could do no wrong. They went from Warcraft to Warcraft 2 to then Diablo to then Starcraft. Like, this was amazing. And Starcraft was actually the game, the catalyst, that made me start getting interested in building and maintaining gaming PCs. Because my PC was too shit. was just a bag of spoiled ass and couldn't run Starcraft because Starcraft required a Pentium 90, 90 megahertz chip, and I was still running a 480-60X2 for Warcraft 1 and 2. And I was like... Well, how do I get a Pentium 90? I don't even know what that is. So then I started looking into it. I learned all about computers, self-taught, and then I started building computers and I upgraded my computer to an AMD K62300. It's been a huge love of mine, passion of mine ever since, computer hardware and all that shit. So StarCraft 1 was also a catalyst for me in that department. All right, after StarCraft, a game that I would consider probably one of Blizzard's pinnacle achievements in gaming. This next game, the absolute pinnacle, the crowning royal achievement of Blizzard North when Blizzard North was still a part of Blizzard Entertainment. Diablo 2, man. Diablo 2, what can you say about this masterpiece? The cutscenes for the time, they had the cinematics. I mean, now yeah, they look shit unless you're playing Diablo 2 Resurrected. Took a story that was practically non-existent from Diablo 1 and built an amazing narrative, awesome characters. You cared about the world. It was a difficult game. The gear, especially in Lord of Destruction, was 
insane. The builds you could make in this game were insane. You could farm and grind this game out forever. Its end game was replaying the entire story over again, you know, on harder difficulty. And pe people played this game religiously, even until Diablo 2 Resurrected came out. And when Diablo 2 Resurrected came out, which just improved a little bit on the mechanics of how you do things, like, uh, you know, your abilities and stuff and upgraded the music quality and the graphics. That's all they changed. And Diablo 2 Resurrected was a masterpiece as well. Diablo 2 is one of the best games, not that Blizzard's ever made, any company has ever made fucking ever, all right? Fight me if you think I'm wrong. Diablo 2 is a masterpiece. No other ARPG comes close. Not even Path of Exile, man. Diablo 2 was the best ARPG that's ever been made, still to this day. Revolutionary fucking game. Diablo 2 was... There still has never been an, an ARPG release like it or a company that releases a masterpiece on this level that that lives this long. This game's had the longest teeth and longest legs of any game I've ever fucking seen on PC. Diablo 2, chef kiss all day. OK, now Warcraft 3 and its expansions. Warcraft 3 went in a different direction than Warcraft 1 and 2. They tried to add as much story into it as they could, and they tried to actually make a functional narrative in a Warcraft game for the first time. For some worked, for some didn't. I'm kind of in the middle. There was some really cool shit about Warcraft 3's story, like the Frozen Throne expansion had some cool shit with Arthas and and the Illidan fight and you know the 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 War of the Ancients and shit. Like there was some cool stuff in Warcraft 3. And it's Warcraft 3's existence is what started the entire Dota which I don't even like Dota games, but this started a whole new genre of game on its own. It was it was good in that sense. However, for me, I I couldn't really get into the first Warcraft 3 because it was so different for me from Warcraft 2 and from Starcraft uh, and Starcraft Brood War. Like it was so different from what I was expecting, so it kind of caught me off guard. And I didn't really play it all the way through uh, until Frozen Throne came out. And it, it had some really cool shit about it. But you know what? I'm going to put... Warcraft 3 and A tier, um, and it's below Warcraft 2 for me. I thought it it was definitely better than Warcraft 1, but did I enjoy it? And was I as pulled in and enthralled as I was for Diablo? Nah. In fact, you could you could you could make it better than Warcraft 2. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to saying it's better than Warcraft 2. It might be, but Starcraft, Diablo 2, not even close. Warcraft 3, while while a good idea, I almost think would have been better to just make a different IP, but. Also, Warcraft 3 and its lore kind of spawned World of Warcraft eventually, so it's it's kind of a toss-up. It pretty much made Dota and MOBA, like, a thing. It's what birthed that, and I didn't mention that, so so because of that, you know what? I will bump the, it. Did bump, it did create the Dota and MOBA, and I don't like Dotas or MOBAs. I, I don't like them at all. So my tier list is going to be a little biased, but I'll put it above Warcraft 2 just for that. But again, Blizzard didn't do it. So you know what? You know what? You know what? Fuck that. It's going back below too. You know why? Because Blizzard didn't make MOBA and Dota out of it. It was a fan-made map. It was a fan-made game mode. And then Blizzard tried to steal it from the fans because it was just made in their game. That's really fucked up. They didn't even capitalize on it properly. Blizzard being Blizzard. So fuck that. It's right where it belongs. Warcraft 3. Under Warcraft 2, A tier. After Warcraft 3 and its expansion, we got the ever infamous World of Warcraft. I don't think I have to say much about this, but. And I'm not talking about World of Warcraft as it is right now. World of Warcraft, both positively and negatively, changed the entire genre. I'm going to give Diablo 2 more perks because. Diablo 2 did nothing negative to any genre. World of Warcraft did, over time, do some shit negative to the MMORPG genre. If we were rating actual WoW expansions here, this shit would be all over the place. It was the first second-gen MMO we ever had, right? It was the first Gen 2 MMO. It was the first theme park MMO. It did so much shit right. It just dropped you in the world. Vanilla WoW dropped you in the world. There was no big story, no big villain. It was hard as fuck for its time. It was very much D, D elements the traveling is cool the scenery was cool you got to see shit that you saw in warcraft 2 and warcraft 3 and warcraft 1 it was awesome setting cool class system even though it was really unbalanced when it first came out the pvp was fun as fuck the rating was a, a whole new concept no one had rated in an mmo before and it set that up and again that can later be translated to something negative in mmos way years and years later but it was revolutionary. It was a revolutionary game in every conceivable way. No MMO has ever come close to having as many subs as WoW has had. 
Like it's just you can't argue how amazing World of Warcraft was uh, uh, in its infancy. It was just these could trade blows quite easily. Diablo 2 and World of Warcraft very easily. I mean, I still dabble in both these games, so it's yeah, amazing. Okay, next on the list, StarCraft 2. It took us forever after Brood War to get another StarCraft game. In fact, for a long time, I didn't think we were going to get one. So how did StarCraft 2 end up? Well, it's way more micromanaging, way more complex, and you can do way cooler stuff than you could in StarCraft or StarCraft Brood War or Warcraft 2 or Warcraft 3 or Warcraft in terms of strategy. Like StarCraft 2 is a very complex game in terms of strategy. Just watch those fucking insanely gifted Korean kids play this game. You can't keep up. Like in StarCraft 1, me and my friends were playing in tournaments. StarCraft 2, I wouldn't even try that shit. I would get deleted in five seconds because I'm not Asian. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Like this, this shit is... StarCraft 2 is insane, right? Like in terms of what you can do. The music was great. The story is mid as fuck, okay? Wasn't as good as StarCraft or StarCraft Brood Wars story. So it took a step back from StarCraft in terms of narrative. Um, in terms of complexity, mechanics, it was a big leap forward from StarCraft. That could either be a good or a bad thing. Like if you're, you know, if you don't like getting fucking Carpal Tunnel, you probably aren't gonna like StarCraft 2 as much as StarCraft 1. So where would I put StarCraft 2? I would put it ahead of Warcraft 2, definitely not S tier, but StarCraft 2 is a, an A tier game for, for all that it did. I mean, sometimes when my friends come over, we'll still occasionally throw up a StarCraft 2 game and just blow each other up for shits and giggles. Like, we're not good at the game. We never tried to be good at the game. It is what it is, right? Next up. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Diablo 3. <laughs> How can I summarize... Diablo 3. Oh, I know. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. This game had so much hype behind it, so much buildup, and they had like over a decade after Diablo 2. And all they had to do was look at how successful Diablo 2 was and mimic it and improve on it. Instead, they just completely fucked it up. They adopted the goofy ass cartoon graphics of World of Warcraft, which work in World of Warcraft because those were established in Warcraft 2, right? And then Warcraft 2's expansion and then continued and even further amplified in Warcraft 3 and Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne and then World of Warcraft. So it works. You're already set up. Your expectations are set. You know that's how that world is. Diablo 1 was gritty, dark, gothic as fuck. Diablo 2 was even more dark, even more bloody and gory and gritty, right? And then they turned Diablo 3 into World of Warcraft style cartoon. Didn't make any fucking sense. The story was absolutely fucking terrible. <laughs> You win this round, but if the sword cannot be mine, I'll claim the one it's bound to. In the end, the blade shall be- Right, the story was so bad. The characters, they, they disrespected the fuck out of certain big story characters from Diablo, from Diablo 1 and 2. The graphics like just didn't match up. They were good, but they didn't match up with the context of what the world of Diablo is. The the launch was a complete atrocious fucking mess with error 37. You couldn't even play for like a week because stably the botting was out of control. The real money auction house, dude. Dude, we need fuck man. Is there a way I can add another fucking tier to this? <laughs> fucking dog shit. This is where it belongs. Fuck this game. I mean, later when they did Reaper of Souls, um, it got a little darker. The graphics were still stupid and the end game improved. The gear improved pretty much everything that was on a mechanical level that was broken in the original launch was fixed in Reaper of Souls. But the game was still trash, hot fucking garbage when you compare it to Diablo 2 and 1, like just terrible. You're lucky, man. If you didn't play this shit, you dodged a bullet, dude. This thing destroyed my this is where Blizzard was really starting to take a shit, especially with that asshole Jay Wilson. That stupid fat bastard that that ruined this game. He was the lead developer of this game, and all literally he, when he released the game, right the the guy that created and spearheaded and designed the mass majority of Diablo two just made a comment on social media, and all he said was, "At eh, Diablo three, I would have designed it different." That's all he said. He didn't say it sucked, which it did. He didn't say it was bad, which it was. He just said. I wouldn't I would have gone a different direction if I was still in charge at Blizzard North and you know Blizzard North was still a thing and I was in charge of Diablo 3 I would have gone a completely different direction that's all he said and so Jay Wilson published all over he literally said about the guy who made Diablo 2 and I quote fuck that loser 
And eventually Blizzard shit canned him because he's ass. He's totally he totally sucks. Fuck that guy. Fuck this game. This game sucks. What a disappointment. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Anyway, Heroes of the Storm. I I don't like MOBAs or Dotas. I play this very little. But, you know, I had a few friends that played it and they talked about it. C tier. If it's bad enough of a game that the own designers get rid of it, don't use, don't, like, don't support it anymore, that's a C tier fucking game or lower. Okay. Hearthstone. Now, Hearthstone is a card game based out of World of Warcraft's characters. And it, I've had some fun in this game. I never spend money on this game. The biggest downfall of Hearthstone is that it's a total microtransaction shit show. It's pay to win as fuck. But you know what? Another game I noticed it's not on here, which I wish was, is Diablo Immortal. But we all know where that would go. Right into fucking dog shit, right? I'm going to put Hearthstone in B. Above Warcraft 1. It's a B. B, if it wasn't egregious with microtransactions, it could make a low A. But I'm going to put Hearthstone in B. It's pretty mid. Not a bad game. It's fun when you want to just kill time and not think. Overwatch. Now, it already takes a lot. A lot for me to get into a first-person shooter. And a first-person shooter like Overwatch, especially when, I mean, I, I watched some gameplay of it. It didn't seem that interesting to me. It, it has some interesting Team Fortress kind of mechanics. It's a very Team Fortress game from what I saw. Um, and I did play Team Fortress and Team Fortress 2 back in the day. And you know what? It seemed okay. So I'm gonna give, um, I'm gonna give it a low B. Right, Overwatch a low B. I think it would maybe get higher if it had like it it's until they started focusing on all the identity politics of, of the characters in Overwatch, which no one fucking cares about. It probably would have gotten up into A or high B. But I'm gonna give it low B. I mean, I didn't even play it that much. I played it a little bit and I couldn't get into it, but it's hard for me to get into FPSs anyway. Um it's, it takes a lot for me to give a shit about an FPS game. Alright. Overwatch 2, guys. Overwatch 2. I don't think we need to say much other than fucking dog shit. But it's still probably better than Diablo 3. But it's still fucking dog shit. Because, just look at it. It failed miserably. Total piece of shit. Tried to make it into an eSport. Tried to make it something it wasn't. Fucking dog shit. Trash tier. Trash tier game. Okay. Diablo 4. Now... On my YouTube channel, I made one video. And my video said, Diablo 4, could it be the best Diablo? Implying that at the time, I felt it had potential to be better than my beloved Diablo 2 up here. Up here on the, on the throne, on S tier up here, right? You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. You know what? I got baited and switched a little bit. Now, it's, I'm not going to say Diablo 4 is not a bad game. Diablo 4 has got a good foundation. But I was baited a little bit because... Now the game, yes. Is it dark? Absolutely. Is it gory? Great. Yeah. Is it a thousand times better atmosphere and more Diablo-like than Diablo 3? A hundred percent. Right? So it's good there. Now is the story and its context darker than Diablo 2? No. It's probably around... I don't even think it's darker than Diablo 1, to be honest. Some parts are pretty dark, but overall... Nah, it still doesn't touch Diablo 2 or 1 in terms of how dark the game is. Um, but it's it's close. It's close to them. It's just it's just not. Just not the same. But, you know, the initial story had me really drawn in. The story that was in the beta really drew me in. It was really great. But then the story in the middle, the middle part of the story, so after you beat Act 1, because Act 1 was the entire beta, and there's like six, I can't remember if there's six, seven, or eight acts. It doesn't matter. There's a lot of lukewarm bullshit where I lost interest in the middle. And then there's another really cool part, like three quarters of the way through. that involves like Andariel from Diablo 2 and Duriel from Diablo 2 and that kind of shit, right? Like, so there's some really cool, fun shit there. Now, none of that shit that's watered down I just talked about in the middle is bad. It's just not that interesting. It's not like if you want bad, everything about the storytelling in Diablo 3 was bad. But Diablo 4, none of the storytelling is bad. It's just a lot of it's not as good as Diablo 2. Um, and it's not as interesting. And then the ending is quite good too. The very ending is quite good. Is it as good as the ending of Lord of Destruction or Diablo 2? No. But it was good. It was better than the ending in Diablo 1. 
Okay, so it has a very strong beginning, a strong ending, some s small spackles of above average in the middle, but most of the middle is pretty fucking mid in terms of story. The game mechanics, it's a fun game to play. Combat feels fun. A lot of the builds feel fun, but I'd even argue some of the combat feels not quite as fun as some of the combat even in Diablo 3. Like Diablo 3, the combat was the only thing that was good um, that improved from Diablo 2. Diablo 4, a lot of the combat's better than 3, but some of 3 is better. You, you would know if you played it, you would know what I mean. Especially if you're a Barbarian. Barbarian was way funner to play in Diablo 3 than it is in Diablo 4. It's just my opinion. Necromancer is about the same as it is in Diablo 2, if be better, right? Just depends on what you're playing. Sor uh, Wizard in Diablo 3 was way funner than the Sorcerer in Diablo 4, and so forth. But that's some of that's subjective, right? Either way, the mechanics are fun. The talent trees are fun, though they could be improved. The Paragon board is better than the Paragon board in Diablo 3, but could still be improved. So Diablo 4 has a good foundation, but one of the biggest cocks in the ass about this game is a lot of the problems with it were problems that Diablo 3 had at launch, and they fixed by Reaper of Souls. I don't give a fuck what company you are. I don't give a shit what game you make, what type of game you make. If you ever make a sequel to a game, it shouldn't have problems in it that were fixed in previous games. They sh you should never... The player should never be faced with that specific problem again. Gear in Diablo 4 is boring. Legendaries are kind of broken and boring, right? The best legendaries in the game that actually provide some kind of flavor are literally one in a 300 million chance to get. No one gets them. There's like five that have ever been found. So that's not... You know, it doesn't qualify as a as a gear hunt. And Diablo 4 is not a finished product like it was advertised. So, where does Diablo 4 fall on this? Is it as good as Diablo 1 when it released? No. Is it as good as StarCraft? No. World of Warcraft? Hell no. Diablo 2? Hell fucking no. Is it better than StarCraft 2? Yeah. Right now, Diablo 4 is a high A. That's where I would put Diablo 4. It's got a lot of it's got a lot of potential that could fix it and get it up into S tier in a, in a year, two, or three, right? But that's assuming it survives um, Path of Exile 2 coming out, right? That's assuming it survives that whole shit. Because it might not. Blizzard is not Blizzard anymore and hasn't been for a long time. But as you can see, they're still squeezing out something mediocre to slightly above average every now and again. And then they take huge missteps, right? Like you mentioned with Overwatch 2. It could have been a huge behemoth of a game. Wasn't supported. Um... Heroes was kind of competing, but then they dropped support. Diablo 4 could have been way better than it is, and has potential to be way better than it is. StarCraft 2, again, I think um, the biggest pattern I'm seeing in terms of, like, weaknesses is story. Story, it, story took the biggest hit. Story and a game bug-free experience, because this tier list is missing a lot of shit. Like, if War, like right now, if Warcraft... If Warcraft 3 reforged, it would be in fucking dog shit tier. Diablo Immortal, it would be in fucking dog shit tier. There's a lot of games that would be down here, but they're not on this list, and I didn't make this list, so... So anyway, guys, that was uh, the tier list for this stream. So let me know what you guys want to see for the next tier list, and we'll, uh, we'll definitely do that. What sounds good? How about the Resident Evil games? We could do Capcom. We could definitely do Capcom. Now, I haven't played all the Capcom games or all the Resident Evil games. I think I've played enough of them to make it interesting. Hopefully. If it's not interesting, who gives a fuck, right?